The Forum at 8 on SAFM. Our question this morning is the revelation that more than a thousand police and SAPS staff members have criminal records, a cause for alarm. To answer this question, we say a very good morning to Lieutenant General Solomon Mahale, Head of Communication for the South African Police Service. Good morning to you, Lieutenant General. Good morning, Sabita. And we also say good morning to Gareth Newham. He is head of Crime and Justice Program Institute for Security Studies. Good morning. Good morning and good morning to everybody listening. And we also say welcome and good morning to independent researcher on crime and policing issues, Tamba Masuku. Good morning. Yes, good morning. And we'll hear from uh, the DA's Diane Kola Barnett in just a moment. She's a shadow minister of police. But let me start with you, Lieutenant General uh, Mahala. As I've mentioned, the reaction to these figures, this audit report that you've released. In total, how many police officers and staff members are there out of this total 1,448 members with criminal offences? There, there are nearly 200,000 people employed within the South African Police Service, uh, majority of whom are employed in terms of the uh, South African Police Service Act. The others is the Public Service Act. The ones who have been found with criminal records, how many of those are police officers? They are both from, uh, well, employed in terms of the Police Act and the Public Service okay. Act. But offhand, um, I, I don't have the, the number, but I think it needs to be borne in mind that... Um, these uh, um, members, uh, you know, it, 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 it's concerning, even if it was five people that were found to have a uh, criminal record, um, actually would have, have to be taken. And that's one of the things that uh, the National Committee... Mr. Macha- Lieutenant General, are you still with us? Okay, it seems like uh, we're having a problem with that line. Let's see if we can get him back. But uh, Gareth Newham, your response to this, is it... Is it cause for alarm? Well, I don't think it's necessarily a cause for alarm. Um, It's not completely unusual for police agencies to have a certain number of police officials with criminal convictions. I know it sounds strange to to, to most people, but, you know, um, in 2009, in the United Kingdom, for instance, there was a bit of an outcry because they found out that over 1,000 police officials out of 140,000 had criminal convictions. And then three years later, actually, uh, in January last year, they had another count and found that there were still almost a 1,000 uh, police officials in the United Kingdom that had criminal convictions. And the reason is because sometimes the, the conviction is for a relatively minor offense. Um, it, it might be that you have a very well-trained detective or somebody who is adding value off-duty. They get caught driving just over the, the legal limit convicted so they get a criminal conviction you don't necessarily want to fire that person if they're doing a very good job and if they didn't mean to necessarily um, drive drunk for instance so it's not a complete crisis i think i was actually quite surprised at the relatively low number when you think about mm. um around 2000 there was a parliamentary question and it was then that there were 16 and a half thousand members of the south african police service with criminal convictions so this figure has actually come down quite considerably if you consider what it was um about 10 or so years ago do we know how many of those are convicted of serious crimes? Well, I think that's what the audits should be uh, looking at quite carefully because there's two, two things that can happen. Either the peop- people are being hired into the police service when they already have criminal convictions because the vetting processes are not properly working, and then you want to know, are serious criminals making it into the South African police service? Of course, there's a very famous incident very recently where uh, a police official in the crime intelligence environment was found to have a criminal conviction for armed robbery and she's actually been in jail, and he managed to get into the police. So that shows a problem with the vetting pro- process. So you need to know, are that audit? Um, how many police officials had criminal records and still managed to get into the police mm. system? And then secondly, of those uh, police officials with criminal records, what are the kinds of serious violent crimes? Um, because you still get quite, uh, quite a few instances where police officials are convicted for assault, for instance, assault to GBH, and there's a number of recent instances um, where they then remain in the police service. And I think that, that is a policy issue. The law says that a, a person may only be summarily dismissed from the South African police service if they get convicted for a crime and they are sentenced to a term of imprisonment without the option of a fine. However, if they get con- criminally convicted, say for assault, GBH, even attempted murder, 
and they get a 5,000 rand fine or five years suspended, um, then they're not necessarily automatically dismissed. The South African police service then have to take an internal disciplinary hearing and then find out if they should dismiss mm-hmm. them. In many cases, they don't dismiss them. And in many cases, the, the, the sanctions from the internal disciplinary hearing are actually far more lenient than the criminal justice process. Let me come to you, Tamba Masuku, while we are still trying to get Solomon, uh, Lieutenant General Solomon Mahali back on the line, Head of Communications for the South African Police Service. I think of concern to a lot of people is the fact that we are, in some cases, talking about police officers. And of course, the, the correction can be made if it needs to be by Lieutenant General Solomon Mahali that some of these officers are in possession of a state-issued firearm. I think it, it, it is a it is a concern um, that you you have police officers uh, with criminal records. I think yeah, that's a, that's a that's a genuine concern uh, for, for 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 most people. But like Gary is saying, it's not a, it's not a, a very unusual thing. I think part of the concern is that um, police officers are generally entrusted to protect communities, um, and then when you have police officers with criminal records. The issue of uh, the issue of trust um, becomes a, a, an issue. The institution itself becomes compromised because, in the eyes of people, um, if you have police officers who are, who are compromised because of criminal records, communities will tend not to trust both the institution and both and, and, and its members. I think one of the things that um, that are also important to highlight um, earlier on is that I think it's, it, it, it is a good thing that you, you have a, a system that has been able to, to unearth this. I think it, it brings confidence. I think I would want to have a situation where we have senior police officers or we have a system of accountability where such things can come out and they are known. We would rather know uh, what we're dealing with than uh, things uh, dealt, dealt under the okay. carpet. So I think it's a good thing that we have this, uh, this report coming out because it does give public confidence that something at least is known and something, is con- something can be done about it. Well, let's uh, speak to Lieutenant General Solomon Mahale, who is back on the line. The, the question that's being asked here, Lieutenant General, is how many of these officers have been convicted of serious crimes? And uh, uh, Mr. Newman here, Newman here, raising a very important point, is how many of those have been able to get into the service after being convicted of those crimes? Let me first just correct something in terms of the figures that I provided. We have uh, in total... Uh, in the region of 200,000 uh, um, uh, people working for the South African Police Service. Um, 160,000 of them are employed in terms of the Police Act, and the the figure of 1,448 uh, that has criminal records is only with regard to members that are employed uh, in terms of the Police Act. Now, <clears throat> the... the the offences that the, these members have been convicted of, they range. It's, it's murder, it's rape, it's uh, corruption, bribery, it's um, um, driving while under the influence of alcohol, alcohol and various other petty um, offences. So <clears throat> we obviously take all of these seriously, but we also have to bear in mind that they are employed in terms of the you know what has to take into account the labor relations act in in dealing with these members so i agree with uh, the previous speaker that if these people are not these members are not dealt with it okay. will not instill but, confidence but how many in the are convicted of serious of crimes police. um look the, the numbers vary i don't have the, the exact number of hand as to say these are serious uh crimes but do you have an idea of the percentage crimes. i think the uh, let me make the following point, uh, Tepiso. Whether one is convicted of sh- uh, shoplifting or murder, it's the same principle. They have a criminal offense and uh, it, they need to be dealt with. I think that's the principle that we're working with. But I can say that the majority of them, yes, it's serious, uh, it's serious offenses. So the majority of this 1,448 figure are convicted of serious crimes. Yes. 
as I go but back now, to the point raised by Gar- allow me Lieutenant General Gareth Newham mm-hmm. raised the uh, point of the concern is that some of those have been able to get into the system They've been convicted already, have gotten into the police system. I mean, the the minister himself raising the issue of recruitment being a a very important loophole and factor in in some of these issues. So can you you deal with that particular issue? Yes, very good point. Now, most of them, these uh, convictions, they got while they were in, in the service of the South African Police Service. Recruitment has changed. I think we need to distinguish between two things. We are dealing with people that committed uh, these crimes uh, in 1990 or in 1980. We're not talking about uh, recent uh, uh, criminal offenses because those are being dealt with as and when they happen. We're talking about things that happened a while back and we're talking about people that uh, uh, committed these offenses, majority of them while they were in the service of the police. The challenge that we have is that uh, some of these uh, issues were known to management and no action was taken. And that is why the minister has also instructed that we need to look at the disciplinary code and say what are the things that we need to change so that some of the decisions that relate to discipline are not taken at junior level but are taken at very senior level Mm -hmm. so that the correct decisions can be made but can also be made in a consistent manner. Okay. So that if there is somebody who is found guilty of murder, uh, they are not kept in the service while others are being uh, discharged. You make the point that uh, these are not recent convictions, that these are convictions from the 1990s. So you are aware of the problem and you're acting on it. I'd like to find out what the what Indeed. is the turnaround time, though? I, I'm looking at a case of two Guazulu Natal policemen who were jailed for murder uh, for 15 years each in the Richards Bay Regional Court. Now, I'd like to find out, for instance, that is something that's made the headlines. Have they been flushed out of the system already? We, um, I'm not familiar with that particular incident, but let me say in terms of uh, the uh, internal process, if a member is found guilty in a court of law, uh, as we speak today, and they are supposed to serve 10 or 5 years, whatever, in jail. In terms of the acts, they are deemed uh, suspended, and they, that's a much quicker process, and we can, uh, they can be dismissed. However, what we are dealing with here, remember, it's old cases. The new cases have been dealt with, and it's fairly quick to deal with, because if you are, if you are in jail, you are deemed suspended. Then we follow the labor relations process, and that member will be then be dealt mm-hmm. with, and in all probability, they will be dismissed from the service. Just to give you a, an idea, in the last uh, uh, 12 months up until the end of March, in the region of uh, um, just over a thousand uh, members were um, dismissed from service for various uh, offenses as well as misconduct. So it's something that is taken very seriously because we agree that if we are to correct the perception that people have of our organization, then we need to deal with members who misbehave. Okay. And we'll deal about the, the issue later on, whether or not it's a perception. And also the administration of what you're saying are the uh, implementations in place to deal with current cases, whether or not it is in place and it is working. The Forum at 8 on SAFM. We're in conversation with Lieutenant General Solomon Mahale, Head of Communications of the SAPS, as well as Gareth Newham, Head of Crime and Justice Program at the Institute for Security Studies. Tamba Masuku is an independent researcher on, on crime and policing issues. Now, uh, let's go to Mike in Newlands. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hello, Sophie. So, uh, cutting it show, you really do have one here. I want to just say that, you know, we need to just start first. The, the word perception was mentioned. We've moved from perception to reality. The reality is that we have one police chief who already is in jail. We have one police chief who was dismissed for corruption and, sh- and then gets promoted to the highest office or another high office within the ANC. I don't know what message that sends out to the police. I don't know. And then finally, we have a police chief now, Rio Piazza, who might be the best admin person in town, but sh- she has no police skills. So what we're having is a police force here without being run, not being run by proper policemen. What we've done is we've taken the career policeman who worked his way through the ranks as a constable, worked his way up to the top job in the country because he wants to serve his country, but he gets kicked in the teeth 
uh, gentlemen, because all of a sudden our president wants to put in a political appointee solely so he can manage to control the police force to his benefit. What we have to do, I believe, gentlemen, is we are in so much trouble with the police. I think it was voted the second or third most corrupt government uh, uh, department in the government just recently on some poll. Um, we're in trouble. We need to now act decisively. We cannot tolerate any corruption. I don't want to hear about labor relations. I don't want to hear any excuses. If you are guilty of stealing from the people of this country, you must be dismissed immediately. You must be disgraced. You must be court-martialed, and you must pay back the money you stole, and charges must be pressed. Because if we don't do that right now, we've just lost another police officer here in the Western Cape last night. Why is that? Because there's no respect for the police. Guys, Mike. we cannot have the police, just in conclusion, we cannot have the police enforcing a law which they have, but the very person who's enforcing it has broken it himself. It's just not acceptable. Thank Mike you. in Newlands.